Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. People say it only comes once in a while. When they come, you must grab it. You must use it for the benefit of everybody involved. Because if you don't use it properly, it's going to disappear. And when it disappeared, you cannot get hold of it again. Welcome to the program. Sorry, we're supposed to come about 11 o'clock this morning, but we're just here. But the good thing is that we're here. Nothing more than that. We're here, we're here, and I'm here with my special friend, Tony Nandi, who is an expert when it comes to how to mess this constitution, how to decommission it, how to put it down, how to put it to bed completely. That has been messing every tribe in Nigeria up, up till now. Mr. Tony Nandi, welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Okay, we're here, we're late, we know we're late already, but that's not the problem. I want you to introduce yourself for the benefit of those new people who hasn't been on our program before and they are here with us for the first time. Over to you. Yeah, uh, welcoming viewers, Tony Nadis, my name, as uh, the presenter already told us. Um, I'm secretary to an organization called the Lower Niger Congress, I'm a legal practitioner. Uh, Lower Niger Congress also has uh, an outreach um, called the Movement for New Nigeria, uh, of which I am co-convener. That Movement for New Nigeria is uh, the alliance of uh, the self nation initiatives in the eastern half, the south, the, the western half, and uh, the middle belt. Uh, you know, the, the eastern and western half of southern Nigeria and the middle belt. In those three blocks, the Yoruba the lower Niger, the middle belt, cooperating under the platform called the Movement for New Nigeria, which is actually the Movement for No Nigeria since our, you know, com compatriots in the in the failed Lugadian experiment of 1914 are refusing to listen to any reason at all. So uh, here we are, uh, all focused on uh, dismantling the constitution by which they are holding us hostage, the 1999 constitution. Welcome once more, viewers. Okay, the constitution that is holding us hostage uh, since 1999. Uh, let me just point out some few things because sometimes some few things come up along the line and uh, we need to discuss it. Are you telling me that our mystery started in 1999 or 1967, 1966? <laughs> It, there's no just mischief there's no mistake anywhere both the one of 1914 and the subsequent ones it's all mischief people sat down to this to determine that uh, they were going to create a master servant uh, union and um, that they will they will apply more and more force to to hold it in place that's all that happened and you know? they've managed to be doing that since that time very much so very much so <laughs> even now even now those who are those who are held in servitude, those who are who are slaves under this constitution, don't even know they are slaves. You see, some of them going to say, "Oh, but they're some say they are human rights activists." <laughs> what human right? Do you, what human right does a slave have? You know. So, the we the people who are in the bondage don't at all realize they're in any bondage because they are people selected uh, like the house slave that they selected. Uh, to be put apart from the you know uh, the others and then uh, he begins to think he has become a master <laughs> along with master but uh, yeah, i'm talking about our political actors the governors the senators uh, the assembly members they think uh, they were right but the bottom line is that they are slaves here hmm. you know as long as that constitution uh, hijacks everybody's uh, sovereignty that's what we're living with okay okay uh, I want to thank you for what you are trying to teach us. Uh, let me just make sure that everything is right online because I'm trying to look for the for the broadcast, but I can't find it yet. So let me just make sure our people can actually see us because it is very important that they can see us. Yeah, 
I can see them now. They can mm. see me too. So mm. it's a matter of me see you, I see you business. So I want to thank everybody mm. who are just joining us. A lot of people are joining on YouTube already, which I believe is probably the biggest lifeline for our discussion today. Mr. Tony, once again, yeah. you try your best yeah. to, to, to get here uh, into our Abuja studio in, in Nigeria. We want to thank you for every effort of yours uh, that you've been putting in place to make sure that things goes well for this program every time. First of all, the 1999 Constitution yeah. is the bedrock, yeah. is the problem, is the mystery, yeah. is our war. Like you always put it, yeah. is the tap water, yeah. is the tap that all our mystery has been flowing with. For the benefit of people yeah. who are just joining us for the first time or who are listening to this, who will be listening to this program for the first time later on, can you take us through this problematic constitution a little bit before we continue, sir? Yeah, the, 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 the constitution is uh, simply the union agreement. Let's, let's, uh, let's not let's not complicate it beyond that so that everybody can understand the constitution is simply the union agreement and it's a social contract union agreement in the sense that uh those who have been countries of their own uh, for instance the Yoruba that could be country of 55 million people or the lower niger that could be country of 70 million people or the middle bear that could be country of uh, 40 45 million people you know uh the the they are in a union all of them including the Fulani and the, they are all in a union here but that union was not their original uh, was not their project at the onset in 1914 it was the project of the british and so uh, the, the british set all the rules uh, which they used to bring about by orders in council 1913 1922 uh, 1946 1950 the ones we call uh, McPherson and Littleton and uh, Richardson kind of up to 1960. Uh, then by 1963, uh, it, it became Republican when, uh, uh, you know, more autonomy was, uh, the, the, the complete autonomy was uh, uh, granted uh, the, the, the federating regions of Nigeria. Uh, but basically, it was uh, agreed in all the period between 1951 and 1953 to 1960 that Nigeria would be a federation. A federation is like a, a union of uh, otherwise independent uh, countries or constitutions mm -hmm. and so uh, as we as we approached independence in the negotiations that began from uh, the time uh, in order to move the motion for independence in 1953 uh, all all the discussions boiled down to the fact that we were so diverse as, as various people that the only way to be in one political union it was uh, to have a federal uh, you know arrangement that federal mean meaning uh, that level of autonomy that uh, you know uh, made you almost like a country of your own while cooperating with your neighbors who are also armed with their own constitution. Therefore, the, the Western region had its constitution 1957. Uh, the Eastern region followed, and uh, the, West, the Northern region came in 1959 with theirs. It was these uh, three constitutions that went to Lancaster House in 1959 to discuss uh, how they would federate, how they would become one political union. And uh, the level of autonomy we're talking about here is that your assets belong to you and you contributed only 15%, percent one five, fifteen percent 15% of uh, your income uh, for the upkeep of the center. That center, that federal government, being the, being the union office, uh, <laughs> more or less the, the creation of uh, those uh, three regions. You say, oh, all of us can't go setting up uh, our various currencies, uh, we can't go setting up uh, uh, telecommunication with the outside world. They, they, they listed the few things uh, the center could do, and uh, it was the it was the contribution from the regions that financed the operations of that center as a matter of contribution. You owned your assets, whether it was cocoa or palm produce or oil and gas. You owned your assets, uh, but all of that began to change in 1966 when the uh, military made an incursion into into power, and then uh, the five constitutions that define Nigeria collapsed. You know, progressively, uh, it, it was unitar Nigeria became unitarized by, particularly by decree uh, number fourteen of nineteen sixty-seven, by which uh, the one broke the two, the, 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 the four regions of the time because Midwest had joined in nineteen sixty-three uh, to become the fourth region. It was only the, it began as the north, uh, the, the west, and the eastern regions. 
But by the time, by a plebiscite uh, in 1963, East uh, Midwestern region was uh, carved out of Western region of the time, and it became four regions federating as, uh, like you have uh, Germany and France and Portugal, uh, you know, forming European Union. That was the level of autonomy I, I, I that was uh, that. intended. Yeah. Yes, that was the level of autonomy that was uh, discussed, uh, you know. But somehow uh, the soldiers came and the whole thing came crumbling down. And uh, instead of going to fix it, they went to Aburi to, Aburi to the 1967 to try to fix it back. Uh, they all agreed, but they came back and uh, one of the parties uh, threw all the agreement aside and said that they're shooting people, three point five million die in the East uh, in what became Biafra war, you know. Mm -hmm. So progressively they refused to go back to that discussion and now telling us uh, because they had managed to impose uh, their victory charter which is what this constitution is all of the all of the constitutions we've had since 1967 particularly the one that emerged in 1979 which was carried forward in 1999 were not products of the people it was the victory charter from those who won the war of 1967 you know that's that's what we have and uh, all the structures they created uh, negating the federal basis the, the states, uh, they started with 12 in 1967 and become 6 now. Uh, you know, mostly are viable. Apart from Lagos, I don't, uh, you know, we, you hardly can point at any other state that can pay salaries for two months. If, uh, you know, federal uh, uh, handouts don't come, then you come down to uh, local, local government areas, which were not supposed to be the business of uh, the center. It should have been the internal business of each of the regions, how they organize their sub uh, units. But uh, here we are in Nigeria, some of some local government areas, uh, you know, uh, listed in the constitution, uh, uh, being given, uh, you know, uh, money from the, the center that does not bring anything. So it became a matter of a robbery operation in which uh, the omnipotent center, you know, overthrew <laughs> the regions, seized their assets, and became the, the, the union itself, you know. So we have an illicit federal government. Uh, uh, you know, in that kind of a setting, they work, all of the, all of the federal government we've had since 1967 have been illicit federal government. The federation collapsed. Why do you have a federal government in the absence of federation? We have a unitary, a totally unitarized union, and but we have uh, people sitting around in the capital Abuja talking about the uh, federal government and the uh, federal police, uh, federal army. Unfortunately for all of us, uh, uh, you know, the, that, that federal government was in turn, the federal, the federal government hijacked the regions, they hijacked the assets of the regions and became, and became the owner of everybody. That same federal government has in turn been hijacked by the Fulani, who now have become the owner of uh, both the federal government and the federation and everybody in the federation. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with a very, uh, very volatile uh, situation because people are, people are getting to find out, people now realize that uh, it's, it wasn't any mistake, it wasn't uh, out of incompetence and not knowing what to do. They are, they are, they are on a mission of conquest, a mission mm -hmm. of colonization, those who are doing these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've managed to impose by decree everything they will need to paralyze everybody else they've seized the access of everybody by just by decree upon decree upon decree the assets uh, the oil and gas assets of the niger delta seized by decree it's of lagos uh, the limestone of benway the, the rights to even uh, you know uh, elect uh, who governors in uh, various uh, spaces the right to generate electricity if i start the right to police as uh, taken away the right to even incorporate company to uh, uh, put our, you know, ourselves uh, to work, all of that uh, sequestered, uh, and then what do we have? Uh, the, a society in decay, uh, corruption because of this, the, the, the so much uh, assets uh, that were sequestered to the to a center that uh, doesn't know uh, what to do about anything. Of course, uh, uh, the purpose of the of the venture itself uh, is to steal. The, 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 the original purpose of the Nigerian uh, Union, uh, Nigerian. Uh, you know, uh, contraption by Britain uh, was a like, it was just a criminal venture, an offshore criminal venture of the British in a joint venture with uh, the Caliphate, the, 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 the Pulani who uh, got here by jihad, you know, since, 19, uh, since 1804. Mm -hmm. So the, the British came from the water, Atlantic waterfront, the, the Pulani came from uh, the foot of a uh, foot of yellow mountain, landing in a place called Gober, which, uh, which is now Sokoto in that uh, plant and so 
from the beginning it was a joint venture between the two for the purposes we have seen here and all the constitution that all the constitutions that have been used to govern nigeria from that 1914 to date have been have been designed to service this uh, fraud and so we have arrived at the one of 1999 in which uh, first it is alleged that we made a document we never we never made it says we the people that we the people means yoruba Babisata, we the joa nobony and chief and idoma you know uh, committing their lands and their people into a union like the company and it's a memo and article because they what the man article is to the company, uh, the constitution is to the country. The memo creates the company where uh, uh, Johnson, James, and Jude are coming together to form a twice limited. Uh, the article uh, is the, it's a separate document uh, describing how the owners of XYZ Limited will relate among themselves. What uh, when, when you did, when you go to the preamble of the constitution, uh, the one we have on the table now, you will see where it says, "We, the people of Nigeria, having solemnly and firmly resolved to live in unity as one indivisible country." That's the memo. Then you come to the balance of uh, the falsehood. The second falsehood is that do hereby make and give unto ourselves the following constitution. You know, a total lie, and so. Between those two lives, uh, we are stuck in this mess in which uh, every inconceivable thing is written down as what we have agreed to, 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 to live with. That we have agreed all to live in, in, in a 36 states formation, that we have agreed all to live in severance and for local government uh, area formation, we have agreed to 68 items exclusive list that take away every asset and the right to work those assets you know uh, uh, basically just accepting to be slave uh, in your in your land that we that we all approved of uh, uh, you know section 6 or section 6c that uh, you know uh, more or less uh, 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 relief government of obligation towards the citizen mm -hmm. in what is supposed to be the social contract because the whole of chapter 2 that uh, lists all the good things of life is uh, rendered uh, 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 more or less uh, nullified by that uh, uh, section six, section six C. There's also section six, section six D, uh, that uh, lays the foundation for the kind of impunity because it gives for the kind of impunity we have uh, seen uh, in Nigeria because it lays, uh, you know, it grants uh, a 33 year blanket, uh, you know, immunity to all of those who who, who brought Nigeria to its knees from 1966 uh, January 15. That section actually. Let those who have access to the constitution and it's all of, available all over the internet now download 1999 Constitution of Nigeria. You will see these things by telling you. It's unfortunate that lawyers in the land are going about the holding of that document as constitution, refusing to, to tell other people that it's all a scam. And uh, uh, because the owners of the joint venture still sell three million bags of crude oil every day unchallenged, because uh, they've set all the rules for how nobody will ever challenge them. The, the section 660. Six, uh, you know, provide them blanket immunity for whatever atrocities they committed uh, between 1966 and 1999, May 29. And then, uh, uh, if, if they do not owe you obligation, like we have seen in Section 6 or Section 6C, which, uh, you know, puts everything at their discretion, whatever they do for you, you have to thank them. They don't owe you any obligation for school or hospital or anything at all. And then uh, they have the spare key to the Treasury, Section 81. Uh, and 82 for the president. 81 says uh, the president must go to National Assembly to obtain permission to spend money. Section 82 says uh, while they are debating, it's at liberty to spend money uh, during a, a running government, subject to a certain dubious uh, limit, uh, which refers to 50% of what was approved the year before. What do you? How do you? How do you? How do you leave uh, such a you know a bottomless uh, pit open and expect to have a dividend of democracy? You go from there to uh, for as it is for the president in one in section 81, 82. So it is for the governor in uh, sessions 121, 122, the governor uh, ostensibly has to go to get permission to spend money from the assembly. But while they are debating, the governors are able to run a uh, government, government, uh, you know, s uh, spending uh, all the money uh, he needs to spend subject to some uh, 50 percent. What is that 50 percent? Uh, the, 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 knowing about this provision, those who have to steal money only know to, need to load the figures. Uh, you know, you, you, you are sure you cannot get more than 50, 50 billion, for instance, for education. You go and put a budget of 150 billion. That gives you a threshold and a benchmark of uh, 150 billion, which 50% uh, is 75 billion already. So whatever comes in, 
and the name of edu that should have been used for education you the, the head of executive branch can take it and go and drink pan wine in singapore <laughs> i mean mm -hmm. because again there's immunity provision in section 308 so they don't they do not owe you any obligation they have to spare key to the treasury you cannot question them no matter how much evidence you have against them at what point are you going to get any dividend of democracy so it becomes uh, baffling every time you see ngo civil society people talking about uh, you know uh, some kind of free and fair election or uh, you know fighting of corruption or uh, you know dividend of democracy they're just they're just telling lies they're either they're either hopelessly uh, ignorant or or, or irredeemably dishonest. All of those who say they can fight corruption on that disposition, because uh, it, it, it's like uh, saying that uh, the criminal, a criminal gang, uh, you know, uh, will have to be the one to set the rules for how society will function well. Of course, they're going to tell you to switch off electricity at night so that everybody can everywhere can be dark enough for them to operate. That's the kind of thing we, you know. We, we have as constitution every mm. single thing is upside down we can't we can't generate electricity because somebody put it on exclusive list look at refinery what is there refining petrol that uh, will now be on exclusive list uh, so that uh, the poor refinery that uh, the the bomb will be of a federal government they are unable to 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 to, to produce anything now they go to set up a refinery in nigeria republic and the crude from nigeria is going to be transported there by pipe and then uh, uh, the, product, the finished product to be brought back for us to buy at international prices. So what's our stake in the common world? What's our stake in that crude? What's the stake of the owners of that crude? Since they're going to be buying whatever uh, everybody has buys in the international market. So the federal government has become, the federal government has, has controlled and owned by the pool and now have become the owners of everybody and their assets. They're not accountable to anybody for whatever. All the money coming in is not even enough to pay them in their overheads. And they're borrowing money, you can see where they're borrowing money like uh, like drug addicts all over the world everywhere people have money to lend nigeria is there cap in hand mm. okay i've said three million numbers of people every day so mm -hmm. those those are the things uh they're wrong uh, with the doctor there's nothing that like we saw uh, senator shola day on the floor of the senate uh, you know lamenting nothing is going to nothing is going to change under this constitution Elections cannot change it because they are just going to be changing uh, the driver of uh, a, a vehicle that is not it's changing. It's just, it's, 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 it's foolishness of the highest order. It's not a, there's no better leader that's going to come to be able to go and fetch water with the basket. That's what it is. Say, oh, come and govern with this circumstance. Uh, and I uh, hear some of the uh, people in the East talking about uh, whose turn it is to come and fetch. So the, the, the document is. is the document, the 1999 Constitution, is directly responsible for all the all the catastrophes, you know, uh, befalling everybody in Nigeria. Those being killed in the Middle Belt by the uh, uh, invading uh, Boko Haram and uh, the Pulani Hesmen is simply because the the security architecture of Nigeria is so centralized, and uh, the guns, arms, and ammunition on that exclusive list takes away the right for anybody in the Middle Belt to touch any gun, not even their governor, not even your governor can can license you to go and do vigilante with gun any gun the police doesn't give to you become the basis of a shooter site if that if you are found with a gun and so you are disarmed you are dispossessed of your assets because the constitution has sequestered every asset that is of economic value and then uh, people say oh it is our constitution oh let us uh, go and uh, do free and fair election you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pity that uh, people who are lawyers are you know, among those who are saying all this. And go to National Assembly, they say, oh, come, let us go and amend. Amend what? Our complaint in that constitution, the major complaint is that we have not made any constitution. And if anybody wants to understand what we're talking about, go to Section 14.2A of the 1999 Constitution to see who's, who's, uh, who, who has the authority to make constitution. That section, and I'm quoting now, says, Sovereignty belongs to the people from whom government, through this constitution, derives all its powers and authority. Not some, all. And so, uh, it is in the pretense that uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, exercised that uh, sovereignty that they put the falsehood, the two falsehoods in the preamble, the constitution that uh, we, the people, have solemnly resolved to live as one individual country and therefore make and give us access the following constitution. Two false claims. But unfortunately for them, the owners of this land, the sovereign, the sovereignties that have been, you know, hijacked and uh, distressed all this while, have organized. They are coming uh, together to, to to 
to take on that concern and bring it down to where it belongs because you cannot put my signature on a document of damnation against me and expect it to stand there for all time. It's just going to, it's just going to come down along the line. We have arrived at that point where it has to come down. Like the apartheid constitution came down in 1990 in South Africa. Okay. That's where we are. You, thank you very much. That is the background. A very, very good summary of what has been taking place. Where we're here, where we're coming from. Now we know yeah. we're here now. This is what we've yeah. been discussing in the last few days. So the way yeah. out is what we need to talk about yeah. now. And we yes. have a very good opportunity that somebody like you knows that way out. And we find out if you don't use that way out now and a skip, which is a very big opportunity for us, then we're going to get into serious issues. Because if we yeah. ever allow this constitution to be used for 2023 election, then we're in stock for another four years or eight years if care is not taken. So what do we need to do? What step we need to take one at a time? I said something earlier on when you were talking. I said, so mm. the, the relationship Nigeria has so supposed to be the relationship that they are actually planning for their big euro. Then. Yes, and all the countries right. comes together and form a big country, uh, a big uh, continent called Europe, where have they have economic, uh, military cooperation, but they still keep their own police. Everybody yeah. keep their own police. Everybody keep their own army, but they have a super army that they all contribute into. Every, everybody generates his own electricity. Everybody does his own infrastructure. Everybody sets its own standards. Uh, you know that must uh, be within some kind of uh, parameters to fit into the union. Yeah. Everybody, everybody is responsible for his own assets and how to manage those assets to the best benefit of his own citizens while cooperating with others in this in the subregion. You know, but here it is no longer a federation, and uh, we agreed to be a secular state. It's no longer a secular union because uh, some people have been put Sharia in their contiguous zone. And uh, if suppose human life is no longer sacrosanct because uh, the, the, the same people who impose Sharia owe it a duty of faith to kill the children. And if you go to section 10 of the constitution, uh, expressly, the shortest, the shortest section in the whole of that constitution is section 10, which expressly forbids state religion by federal or, or state uh, government. But here we are, 12 contiguous states, you know, impose Sharia simultaneously in year 2000. And they've been enforcing it so vigorously that uh, Boko Haram came along the line to join in that enforcement. How am I going to? How am I, how am I supposed to make a distinction between what uh, those uh, twelve states set out to do and what Boko Haram came doing later? Because they both insist that uh, they reject democracy, they reject uh, you know constitutionalism, they, re they reject uh, secularism, all of which are basis of uh, the union we entered into. And uh, if if those twelve states are saying it and Boko Haram is doing it. Because uh, uh, imagine the champion of uh, the entire thing, and when it began, uh, the one that was governor in Zafara, what's his name, uh, Sari Yerima, you know. Uh, if she, if 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 Shekau, if if Yerima Yerima, we saw him chopping off the hands of people in the name of Sharia in the state he was governor governor in, and then uh, uh, Shekau comes later to to blow people's heads off with the uh, 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 bombs and grenades. We saw Sunny Yerima go to Egypt to buy a 13 year old girl in the name of marriage because it's Sharia allows it. Shekau goes to Chibok to grab a whole number of girls and they're uh, selling them in marriage. What's the difference? So, how am I to, how am I to continue in the union uh, with this kind of compatriots? If I were, if I were to, if I, if I were to use uh, that term compatriot, the people who owe it a little of faith to kill the rest of us. The people who believe all men are not born equal because they are feudalists, therefore they are born to rule others. Mm. The people who who have who 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 have departed from the secularity that we so expressly, you know, uh, 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 formalized in the constitution, say, look, it is a fundamental mm. basis of being in this union that it will be a secular state, so that nobody because once you bring Sharia, uh, the person who uh, embraces embraces Sharia. You know, uh, the adherents of Sharia owe it a little of faith to kill the others whom they call infidels. How are you going to, what, what, even if you resolve all the other matters, 
How are you going to resolve that? It will never be resolved. That what what happened to in, in you know, uh, uh, Pakistan in India. You know, <laughs> Pakistan wanted Sharia. The rest of India didn't want Sharia. He couldn't. There was there's no there's never a meeting ground they're going to find. So the earlier we begin to wake up, uh, to realize that the choices before us now uh, is whether we go the highway to Yugoslavia or we branch off to Czechoslovakia where we can. <laughs> it's as simple as that. You know. Okay. Okay. When they start the Sharia law, when the twelve states of the north establish Sharia law. Yes. They've actually said to everyone that they want to run their own thing. Why don't we do our own thing? Yes, this is they seceded, they seceded from the secular union, but uh, some of our own people who refuse to listen uh, continue to think they will be persuaded to come and abandon Sharia, and all of us begin to do secular union again. No, they've gone, we've seen how far it's gone now. They've just uh, gone their way, but they, they, they are, it, 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 having, having consolidated their base, they are now on a conquest mission against the rest of us. I mean, they said with the same constitution they put our signature, it's forgery. They put our signature on as uh, having authorized uh, all of what they are doing against the rest of us. They have, they've seized all our assets, they've seized all our rights, including the right to, including the right to our to our lives. Because uh, people who can be going about shooting in the numbers we have seen, you know, it means the other people don't have the right to life. How much more right to property? That's what happened to oil and gas of Niger Delta. That's what happened to the port of Nigeria. That's what happened to the limestone of uh, Peru, which. Uh, Dangote processes and uh, sells back to them at uh, several times the price, uh, whichever. He doesn't even pay anything to anybody. They allocate half of the port of Lagos to him uh, as his own private operational terminal. In Kotakot, they allocate to Atipu and Kota, all full of the people. Where do they think that the rest of us are blind and deaf and dumb? Mm. Uh, just because not nobody, are you nobody... telling me we're not blind the way we're operating? I think we're blind. <laughs> You're stupid. No. Uh, oh, if, uh, yes, if. Uh, if if there were people who were blind, then there are others who are awake and they're taking steps to reverse the situation. And I can tell you, we are the, are the terminal phase, are the landing phase of that long flight to freedom uh, okay. from this or on, on this uh, bondage. And then, okay. so now we uh, to, talking about what to do. Yes, you raise, you raise, you raise, and it's, what do we do now? The logic of what has to happen now is this: I want our people to listen carefully. What do we do to get rid of the 1999 party? First, we all now see that uh, all of what we lament flow from that constitution. Everybody can see that now. Second, we come to where people now say, oh, if that is the case, then let's turn off the tap. They all agree that the 1999 constitution has to go. They, they, that brings us to where they say, what exactly do we have to do to get rid of it? Then I go to the logic of uh, the situation. Let it be known that the life of the constitution is renewed once every four years by a process we call election. Election is the oxygen, is the bloodstream of that constitution. Only political parties contest election. Only political parties. The case of uh, Amechi, as it went to Supreme Court, confirmed that. So it's not all the people you see printing posters. It's political party that contests election. And so, if the renewal of the life of the constitution is by election, and political parties are the ones who contest election, those who are choking under that constitution, who have taken all the trouble to repudiate it as formally as they can, we saw the Yoruba go out in Adama Super Stadium on the 7th of September in 2017. We saw uh, earlier than that in Border Court, where the Lower Niger, uh, that's the South, South, and South East, uh, together as ethnic minorities cooperating had gone out uh, on the Solomon Assembly in Portugal, Solomon Assembly of the People's of the Lower Niger. Google these things, go to YouTube. Anyone I say, click it on your phone and you will see the human beings who did it when they did it. You may not have heard about it or understood it when it was going on. We are putting the picture, the jigsaw back now for you to see. From the time we went to Pronaco to all the time we went to court in 2007 saying we didn't make this constitution, to every other step taken all the way to those Solomon assemblies that happens and the middle of the one of middle of took place on the 18th of july in uh, in 2018 and uh, the three having repudiated now come to say they can't go to another election to renew the life of that constitution in the following electoral uh, in the in the in the approaching electoral cycle of the time well because many people didn't listen uh they, they allowed their uh, tormentors to drag us to that uh, 2019 election and here we are now blood all over the place hopelessness all over the place 
everything upside down. So we're again telling them that <coughs> those who are inviting you to come to go with them to election in 2020, we have defeated this day to day. What we are doing has defeated the 1999 constitution. But those who should have been bolting away from the prison, the caliphate prison, the minute, are sitting, sitting back there and discussing how to renew that uh, imprisonment in 2023 with people who are struggling to save that document. The, the people who impose the document now realize that they have to give up something in order to save the document. One of their giving up power. Power to who? Oh, say, Eastern Nigeria, come and preside over the rot, come and preside over the robbery, come and preside over the bridge for a while. That's what they are throwing in, uh, in, in return for saving the life of that constitution. And uh, of course, we've told uh, those who are, you know, uh, uh, prancing around in the East that it's their turn to come and do what, come and govern Nigeria with this constitution. We already told them that they are putting, that they are setting themselves on a head-on collision with all of those who reject that constitution in that part. If they do not listen in good time and make the U-turn to come to join their people who are rejecting the constitution of death, the constitution of attrition, the constitution of backwardness, they are going to they are going to learn the hard way right on the streets from those who have been shot at from those whose lives have been ruined from those who have been threatened you know who's a hopelessness who who who, who have been pushed out of their ancestral home you see them trekking across the Mediterranean and trying to get into europe you see them in china and other things the organs are being harvested what happened to their homeland their homeland is occupied by people who who who, who owe it a duty of faith to kill them who believe that they, 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 they are born to, to, to be slaves in, their, in that uh, homeland occupied by those people. <laughs> it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Anybody who doesn't understand it will learn the hard way. The owners of the assets, the owners of the sovereignty that have been, uh, you know, uh, hijacked all this while, have uh, come together to, uh, you know, stop the journey to renewing uh, that, uh, the, the life of that constitution. And so, the, the straight answer to the question of what exactly do we do to take down the constitution lies in the, the answer is we must now get the political parties to close shop until we since the winner of any election will have to govern swear to and govern by that constitution and political parties are the only ones uh, hanging on to the document and trying to get to the election in far away 2023 the rest of us can tell them, look, don't, don't even come starting. And um, who are those rest of us? All of those who are not, who have not sworn to defend that constitution like others have. All of those who are not a part of the political party machinery that go to contest. They don't even, they don't come to one fifth of the balance of the population. Those who have to, who, 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 who win elections. And if elections happen in 2023, uh by the time you take the count of all of those who may be winning and be sworn in you 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 come to about 1500 people at the most hmm. Hmm. so is it because of this 1500 when i say 1500 i'm talking about uh, the president that's one person the 36 governors uh, the the senators that are 109 the house uh, of reps members that are 360 360 plus 109 plus 36 plus one Okay, put all the assembly members, all the House of Assembly, you know, you, you, you discover that the, the still doesn't come to anything. And so why do we, why do we, why do we not, you know, just tell them to stop in that journey to nowhere? Hmm. The ship of state is sinking. I see people jumping out there, I neck will go and do it uh, uh, this way and that way so it becomes better. Those who are discussing INEC and how it will function better, those who are discussing free and fair election, those who are discussing better candidates, good leadership, ask them by what constitution will the winner govern? Or how will anybody who emerges in this kind of circumstance now turn around to this? How is he going to deal with the 36 states that they already turned everything upside down? How is he going to deal with this? It's a one step for local government area. Is he going to dismantle them unilaterally? Without going back to the assembly that uh, you know is benefiting from it in Abuja? So these are things, these are little critical questions that people are not asking. Okay. They just, they just uh, say, oh, me, it will get better, it will get better. No. Let me jump in there. Let me jump in there before we continue. Yes. Yesterday, yes. this is a yes. this is the side question. Yesterday, we find a product yes. of this problem uh, regarding the monarch, uh, the Ondo State monarch that was killed yes. by yes. bandits or X-Men or even Yoruba people yes. themselves. We don't know yes. yet. Because... 
the way things are going now, it seems there's a bigger problem to come in on those states. Because just coming off the wire now, in the last few seconds, is the wife of uh, Ondo State, uh, uh, where is it? Kidnap, adopt wife of Ondo State governor's chief of staff. Kidnappers mm. have just adopted the mm. wife of the Ondo State governor, governor, chief of staff. A wife of Mr. Mm. Olubenga Ale, chief of staff of, to Ondo State governor, Rotimi Akredulu, have been adopted by sub suspected mm. gunmen. The woman, the mm. woman was kidnapped in the Owena area of Ondo State on Thursday night. Community source confirmed to us just now. So this are people well, behaving stupidly or they stupid or they, they they don't know this is coming for everybody soon? They are they are under a spell, but when the AK forty seven turns up at their doorstep, that spell will leave them mm. if they are still alive to tell the story. Now anybody anybody by the, in, in, in the mid section of uh, most of last year, uh, particularly between uh, between January and July. This subject matter was being discussed in uh, in Washington, in Capitol Hill. The task of leading the presentation fell on me uh, to tell uh, our partners out there, people who have the stakeholders in the Nigerian enterprise uh, out there in, uh, in Capitol Hill, you know, so what's, what's really going on in that place? Uh, all the while they were being told uh, by, by those who were trying to conceal the truth that it was farmers and herdsmen clashing. You are in your community. You see Southern Kaduna, you see Benway, you see Plateau everywhere. You are your you are your you are your community. You don't have any problem with anybody. People turn up in your farmlands, people turn up in the dead of the night in your ancestral home and begin to slaughter the others. And when they have wiped out the whole community, they bring full and people and put in the place. Full and headsmen who are the ones uh, taking responsibility. Miyetiala, you know, uh, 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 claiming glory for whatever uh, full and headsmen are there. It is an ethnic cleansing uh, mission being executed. What is going on in Ondo now? Uh, if anybody ever had the story of Afonja and uh, how they uh, cooperated for a while and then uh, got overthrown for the rest of the while, that's what's going on in the place. The people who have been uh, going to you know uh, uh, hold uh, lock 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 hands and dance steps with uh, this invading uh, you know Pulani, they they are being dislodged. They are, they are moving in uh to 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 they have people who are working with them they are removing the ones who are refusing to work with them that's all i can see if anybody sees any other thing the matter of fulani uh, the matter of a uh, men clashing with the uh, farmers falsehood we succeeded in dismantling it in, in washington to say there's no farmer and headman clashing what we have is fulani men invading communities and, and militia eliminating the owners of the land and bringing full to plant in the place then they switched when they saw that they were being challenged that uh, it was clear to it was getting clear that it was full an ethnic problem wearing a religious garment because uh, they also come uh, most of their victims are christians uh, whom they think are infidels who should be killed who should be dispossessed of uh, every asset and so uh when that pretense began to wane because more people now realize it is full of knee killing everybody else pretending they're on a jihad but killing also uh, muslims uh, like you see in zamfara killing also muslims that are not of full and stock but uh, having to bring isis like we saw in 2014 when isis and boko haram joined the forces to become iswap uh, it's just a matter of pretense they go from there to say oh it is poverty in the northeast we saw when uh, all the development uh, you know funds are available were uh, domiciled to not 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 not, uh, not east as uh, the solution to the killings going on there did it work no because it was a lie it wasn't a matter of poverty it was just an orchestrated uh, an orchestration for 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 grabbing power like the which they eventually got in 2015. so mm -hmm. it's not it's not farmers and herdsmen clashing it's not poverty in the northeast then they went to the next one. Oh, community clash. That was what the IG came out saying, that the community the boundary dispute and all of that. We have all seen that it is not so. It's not so. But the, the, the last one that they are still promoting by every means, uh, you know, possible is uh, the one they say bandits. <laughs> bandits, because they are trying to conceal it is full of it that is killing the rest. They are trying to conceal that it's a jihad, it's a, 
is a, is something they are doing uh, targeting people. What's the name of what's the name of the 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 paramount ruler that was killed? Check whether it's Christian or Muslim. It's a Christian, Isaac. His name so, is Isaac. So you see, uh -huh, you see, you see. Look around uh, that uh, entire area to see those who agree with uh, the uh, the invading Islamic uh, Isla extremists. But uh, you know, we, these things are too plain to uh, admit all this. Uh, bandit can mean that it is Yoruba bandit that has gone to cause commotion in uh, Brno. Bandit can mean it's a jaw bandit, uh, you know, uh, uh, stealing cows and killing people in that part. So they are trying to conceal the Fulani part and the Jihad part. Unfortunately for them, the, the, the stakeholders in the global arena who should know are in the full know. Those four false narratives, you know, uh, were dismantled. It's not farmers and herdsmen clashing. It's not uh, uh, poverty in the Northeast. It's not community crash like the IG of the time was his name again, uh, tried to persuade everybody. And it is not any banditry. It is ethnic cleansing being executed by Fulani in joint venture with ISIS for the purpose of creating a homeland for the Fulani. We saw the governor of uh, Bauchi telling us Fulani from everywhere in Africa belong to Nigeria. And in that joint venture, ISIS uh, that has become Islam by the marriage with uh, Boko Haram uh, <laughs> will have an operational base. Full of this Nigeria will become the homeland of Fulani if nothing stops them. ISIS will have an operational base to tackle the rest of the world. That was what we went to discuss with them last year. And uh, uh, those who have their ears to the ground, in fact, uh, who listen at all, will have uh, realized that the U.S. Uh, made their policy pronouncements on what they were going to do. It doesn't matter what elections, uh, how elections go. Uh, it is national security uh, imperative uh, going by the executive order of uh, June 2 in 2020, mm -hmm. signed by President Trump. It is a national security emergency for the U.S. that uh, ISIS, with whom the uh, U.S. is at war, have found uh, you know some kind of landing in Nigeria, received into the space by people who openly who are openly associated with Boko Haram that in that joint venture with ISIS and uh, we saw Mietia life anybody's thinking uh, that it's a remote connection no we saw Mietia life that takes uh, responsibility day and night for uh, the exploits of uh, Fulani herdsmen that have been designated uh, number three uh, you know uh, Okay, I don't know what happened to Tony's system there. I think maybe somebody is trying to call them, but we should return back to them quickly. Yesterday we were talking about the monarch that was killed in uh, Ondo State, the one of the traditional monarch, paramount monarch of Ifo uh, in uh, Ondo State that was killed by uh, X-Men yesterday uh, afternoon. So today. Uh, information reaching our studio is that another thing, another thing terribly terrible thing happened yesterday night again and this was the the chief of staff to the Ondo state governor uh, uh, governor Akeli Dulu's uh, chief of staff the wife of the chief of staff was actually kidnapped yesterday as well and you know what they said they get army and police and Amotekun to stop coming to place Amotekun that you refuse to harm to do the job. I'm a tech one, you refuse to ham to do the job. That was insane. I can't believe you can go and get a motekun to do that. I think we're just getting Tony back bit by bit. So uh Mr. Tony, welcome back. We find yeah. you back at last. Yes. <laughs> that was a loss in connection, but that's not a problem. So the issue now that our people are still not awake. Because we are selling ourselves to the enemies. How can all this be happening in Nondo State that have a governor that is governing mm. under this 1999 constitution that actually pledged an allegiance to this 1999 constitution and are governing by it? And mm. all these are happening in his own town. I am not a military, I am not a ruler, I am not in government. But I've seen things mm. on television that they can buy. A each seeking helicopter, just one each seeking helicopter, 
and put it up in the sky. And they will know who is in the forest. So they can know. No, exactly. they will not. <laughs> who, 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 who are you talking about? The federal or the state government? Can the state government buy a helicopter for the police? No. They, well, the poli po police of who? The police is federal government exclusive property of federal government. The police. Hmm. That police have been hijacked by those who now own that federal government because, they are, like I said before, the illicit federal government of Nigeria have been hijacked by by a tiny, you know, section, the Pulani. All the all the all the uh, agencies of that federal government go and make a map of Nigeria and put on that map uh, the the top twenty elements in each of those. Whether you are talking about the army or air force or police or DSS or all the ambient groups, up to immigration up to prison, up to customs. Go and put the num the, the top 20 NNPC everywhere you turn. Hmm. So you 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 come to, to the realization that the the illicit federal government that emerged from the point in that the that the federation collapsed has in turn been hijacked by this uh, Fulani who now own that federal government. And so the police you are talking about is the exclusive business of federal government under that exclusive list that put police and arms and ammunition in the exclusive list. That's how it became their business. So if if, if it pleases that federal government, they could go and import 1,000 shikaos and put in your space, give them Nigerian army uniform. You saw the people that uh, they say they are pardoning for repenting and putting them back in the army putting them back in all kinds of places uh, to go and do fight who, you know. So they, on those states should ordinarily, in a federation, have armed people, you know, looking out uh, uh, across their border, around their border. They should be able to get, uh, you know, as the helicopter you're talking about and put in the air. But that exclusive list of that constitution puts it beyond their reach to do. There's mm -hmm. nothing they're going to be able to do because it is the federal government that must do it. If they're not doing it, you get what you get. That's what they're getting. And all of those who swear to defend and uphold that constitution are the ones responsible for these things happening. When things will snap, the ordinary people, the populace that didn't know before, will be told that the people who swear to defend and uphold that constitution from their spaces are the ones directly responsible for their killings. That's what they are going to see in the days to come. It won't be the ones that came from afar. The people who swear to defend and uphold that constitution, meaning every governor, every senator, every house member from the south, from the middle belt, from the territories that have been invaded by these other people who have hijacked the Federation of Nigeria. Hmm. Hmm. Things are going to snap. Things yeah. are going to snap. Hmm. You, you said it about two weeks the ago. Enemy, the enemy, the enemy, anyway. the, the I'm sure people in Ondo State now know that they're under siege. I'm sure they now know. But let those who let, let those who are hanging on that side of that constitution get it very clear in their mind that when those people who now realize the source of their problem, yes, the constitution is the source of their problem, but there are people who are supposed to be on your side, on our side, who are sustained, who are carrying the ladder for the enemy that imposed that constitution. Some of them are in the legislative branch in National Assembly talking nonsense about how to come and amend constitution we didn't make. We're talking to them now, they're not listening. A day will come when they will when they'll be, when they'll be looking for who to talk to, they won't find. Because they are being adamant in their wickedness. They are being they they they, they insist they, they have conquered everybody. In it is it is it is their involvement, it is their participation that validates what this uh, illicit now. federal government is doing. Well, 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 well. I, I remember about two weeks or three weeks ago when we were having this yes. program and you said that we need to watch out for what is to come because the writing is on the wall now that this is coming. In the last few days, uh, Chief Olufalai's farm was set on fire. Yesterday, they killed a paramount ruler of Ondo State Late yesterday, they kidnapped the chief of uh, staff to the governor of Ondo State. They kidnapped the wife. And this has been going yeah. on all in Ondo State there. 
So they actually giving them a double whammy, triple whammy, or triple whammy in Ondo <laughs> State, and that will spread to other part of Yoruba land. So, guys, the it's, not, it's, is not, it's not only it's, it's not only Yoruba land. The, that's the the rest of Nigeria is under siege. That's what I said. It's a ethnic cleansing. Unless we dress back from the commotion and see the wider picture. Somebody says Fulani from everywhere in Africa belong to Nigeria. Another person from the same stock, who happens to be president, throws the border open. Say, everybody come. While locking down the southern borders in such a way that you couldn't pass uh, to do your... The Yoruba that live uh, in, uh, <laughs> in uh, uh, Badagri can no longer... The Yoruba of Lagos can no longer cross the border to go and deal with the Yoruba in a... Uh, uh, Dahomey or Federal Republic, as they call it now. But in the north, is a borderless situation. In the in that uh, in that caliphate north, is a borderless situation. Sorry that we are appropriating money to build roads that will go into Nigeria Republic. We are building refineries that will now supply us uh, petrol down here. And we are still well, these people know that the union is over. They are building. They are attaching themselves to another economy altogether, borrowing money from everywhere they can borrow. Fine to borrow. And we are all watching them, but they, they, are, they are operating because there is a constitution binding us together with them. The task before us now, except we, if we are not prepared to do what it will take to take what it requires to take down this constitution as a matter of utmost urgency, that's the only chance we have against them to remove the title deed. They have a title deed. That constitution is their title deed. The validation of that title deed is our signature on the document. At the claim of we the people having submitted ourselves we can end that trauma today by saying we did not by 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 halting those the political parties that are still planning to go to another election we we can we can ask them we can compel the political parties across the south and middle belt to close shop unless they close shop the people who want to be governor and senator will continue to drag us so that this enemy will have another four years to 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 forage deeper into the south they are heading to the atlantic waterfront they are going to get to everybody's doorstep if we do not if we do not take down that constitution we are only holding the ladder for them to come to us when it's our own turn to be killed ondo has come to the front line of it ask mm. ask where and where they passed before they came to ondo those people didn't listen when they, they, they overrun them because they were not listening mm. As they're heading to Ondo, they're also heading into the south and they, they overrun the middle bed. Benue is there waiting in, and the anxiety. Plateau is there being ravaged. Taraba is there being clogged. So we have a choice to continue to pretend that there's a but those people who are going about talking about uh, the, the people who work for INEC, rolling out timetable of how they're going to do better elections. And we're not asking them by what constitution the winner of that good election will govern. Anybody who is not asking that question is a criminal, is a, is a participant in the treason of uh, holding on to a constitution we didn't make as, as the basis of the union and pointing guns at everybody, confiscating everybody's assets and sharing you know, uh, the benefits of it all among the stakeholders that you call governors and senators and all of them who, any, the enemy here is whoever has sworn to defend and uphold that constitution is directly responsible for what has happened in Ondo today. Is directly responsible for what is happening in Southern Canada today. Is directly responsible for what is happening in the rest of the Eastern and Western parts of Southern Nigeria. Whoever, whether he's in your state assembly or is planning to go to your Senate, or is just doing political party. These are the this this is the enemy. If there's only one, if there's only one bullet left in my rifle, left in your rifle, it, those are the people to, to aim it at. Because they are the ones who are holding the ladder for this external enemy to come. If they agree with us today that that constitution was not made by us, they can, we can we can we can we can take down that constitution and stop the union that involves us, uh, opens us up for this kind of invasion. That constitution is the reason we are being invaded anybody who doesn't understand that may may begin to understand it when he said it's chopped off because they're coming they're get, they're going everywhere they are not building nigeria with you they are trying to destroy nigeria to build their caliphate they point you to nigeria when they kill people it is 
Fulani, killing us, Fulani. I was talking about Mietela. Mietela, the, the, your president is a, is a, has been a, what do they call it, a grand patron of Mietela. Mietela has been taking responsibility for the killings by Fulani Hesmen, very proudly. Your president go to sit down with Mietela and give them 100 billion for your treasury. And you are still looking for who is doing the killing. You are still waiting for when government to come to your aid. I don't think uh, I don't think uh, it would take uh, you know uh, when 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 the AK forty seven turn up in more people's uh, spaces. Yeah, sanity will return to them. They are not listening to us now. They are still talking about they are still arguing whose turn it is to win to go to govern Nigeria twenty twenty three. Compound fools. But I know that that foolishness will disappear when the when the when the sound of the guns come closer. When more heads are beheaded, will be chopped off all around them okay okay but if we don't want it to get to that we can today say you see no. political party shut that you must close shop now not tomorrow close shop so that it becomes clear that no further election will happen that's the only time we can get them to come to this discussion otherwise they will continue to tell us they agree with us oh restructuring we agree with you they set up committee headed by air rufai to come and plan restructuring for who <laughs> what is the date what is the date for commencement of that exercise south africa got to that date in 1990 when they said okay apartheid constitution is responsible for all our miseries it can no longer carry us we now go to a an announcement was made sometime in 1990 by frederick de clark who was elected under that country. anything short of that anything anybody who is still asking for any other thing is just either completely ignorant or completely dishonest anybody who is saying oh let's go and fight corruption now you leave the tap on anybody who is talking about amendment let's go to national assembly and see how we fix it is an idiot why do i say because your sovereignty have been hijacked the people who hijacked it are sitting in far away place inviting you to come and write them memorandum and you are writing memorandum to go to give to who when this when section 14 2a by their own admission says sovereignty belongs to you the people sovereignty belongs to you yoruba sovereignty belongs to you Ijo. from whom government whoever is going to pretend to be government tomorrow must wait until you in exercise of that sovereignty make a document called the constitution can't we see the connection we have not made it any constitution that is the title yeah. deed by which the full is coming to your space as every day that title deed is in place Fulani is entitled to come to kill you where you are. Today is the Oba in the Undo. The next day it will be somebody else in some corner. If we don't, if we do, if we don't remove that signature to the scene of the whole world, they will be entitled to legitimately come pretending to be government, pretending to be doing democracy, anything you get. But they have their own agenda. They are not building Nigeria with you. You must be a fool to think they are building Nigeria with you. They are destroying Nigeria to build their caliphate. You saw what happened in Syria and Iraq. They had to destroy Syria and Iraq in trying to establish their caliphate. That's exactly what they're doing here. They're destroying Nigeria. So some of our people are still waiting for when they will build up electricity for them. and build up. We see people who go to hobnob with them, uh, pretending to be ministers, building electricity, building railway. When the chiefs will be down, when things will snap, those people from the south and the middle belt who will be found on the side of that constitution will be the prime targets of their own people for whatever they will do in self-defense ahead of anybody any any other target because they're the ones sustaining the evil they're the ones responsible for every day that evil survives because of their desire to gain immediate profit oh a senator 50 million every month governor oh i go go to that location 5 billion 10 billion every month they make calculations for 48 months. <laughs> that is one tenure. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Let me ask you this question. Uh, what do you... Um, Akre Delu is the chief security officer for Undo State. And yet, yes. he cannot control the police in the state in any way or fashion. This is another mystery from the 1999 constitution because police, like we all seen from your explanation, is on the exclusive list. How 
can we stop this party from doing what we don't want them to do? How can we go about it? Do we need to go to their office and talk to them, fight them, go to the house of the senators? What do we need to do exactly? Because we now know this is the problem. We know what to do, but how do we go about it for them to listen to us? They're profiting from it. They're not going to give up all their 50 million. It's a fight. It's a, it's a fight that has to be undertaken. And the choice is to either undertake that fight in which you are now quarreling with your cousin, your nephew, whoever is uh, the one doing political party in your neighborhood, or your street. Anywhere you see political party, that is, that is the that is the nest of the snake that comes to bite you anywhere you see political party in your street corner yeah. that is where they are planning your elimination because the the, the 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 end point of it all is that the elections come that constitution is the, all the political parties subscribe that's an important uh, you know in the logic i was trying to lay the the the, the, the very important point to note is that all political parties in nigeria subscribe to that constitution subscribe to that constitution the rest of us have you know repudiated and rejected as basis of union to that extent in proceeding to a journey of election when we are saying the constitution should be terminated they separate themselves from the rest of the people it doesn't matter that they're in your street corner that is where they, that's the brewing ground and right now the way to begin the engagement is to walk up just we can insist you must close shop political party political party political party close shop close shop that's all we need to do so that they can on, on account of the fact that the winner of any any for any further national elections in nigeria will govern by that constitution that enable these killings enable this corruption enable this infrastructural decay enable this inability to defend ourselves to elect to govern us If we do that, we will then compel an earlier, you know, uh, convergence around the table to discuss uh, the terms of the union. And what will be the main discussion? It will be two questions, like Bola they posed it a long time ago. Are we continuing in this union? Only referendums can answer that. If yes, on what terms? Those are the two questions that have to be answered as, as urgently as you can muster anybody who is not seeking the is not is not already on the task of getting the union to answer those two questions is part of the enemy those who are still discussing how elections can be made better and i, I look i watch the tv at times and i see all kinds of characters coming jumping around to talk about the ngo people oh election let us do it this way the electoral reform go and get your pvc oh young people's party these are products of ignorance extreme ignorance the type that kills because the bible said you perish for lack of knowledge those who are still discussing going to election under this constitution are just waiting for fulani to come to kill them fulani henchmen to come to kill them in their spaces and the alternative to engaging those political parties now as a strategy for bringing down that constitution the constitution is an inanimate object the people sustaining the constitution are the ones, the political parties, who go to contest election every four years. So let's let's look beyond the constitution to see who is sustaining, who is promoting it, who is holding it. At the time we are rejecting it, it is those political party people, the ones who have already sworn to defend, who have already won their own elections, swearing to defend and uphold that constitution, are already guilty of anything we accuse them of because they know since 1999 that that's the content we've done everything to talk to them in private they're not listening now we're talking to them in public now we're talking to them to the hearing of everybody else that they are the ones responsible for the wars they are the ones responsible for sustaining this uh, damnation for sustaining this this uh, this regime of death regime of attrition regime of backwardness because of the profits they make they live in a different world because their their, their children are taken to harvard and oxford you know, in private jets, the rest of the people can go without education. They can go without food. They weaponize poverty. Wow. They weaponize wow. ignorance. Hmm. You send your own children to Oxford and Harvard, and you send other people to go and be a majority. We have millions of them now. We saw governors 
We saw the governors in Kano used to boast that they have 3 million, 10 million amateurs. They can win any election any day. They can use amateurs to truncate any election or turn it in any direction. They were boasting. Now you are pushing those amateurs to the south to go, to just dumping them on us and dragging us to the same level of uh, people who have, have gone to school, you, you know, people who have education. You, you, you wrecked the economy. And you go and start buying Okada and Keke to give to them and push them, just put them in trailers and dump them on the south. We saw it in the Corona lock, in the COVID-19 lockdown. They were pouring into the south from everywhere in such large number. Has it not become a cancerous situation against the rest of us? And we say, let's go and discuss. We say, oh no, it cannot be discussed anymore. We've conquered you. Anybody who talks, we club him down. Look at young people who came to protest something as simple as uh, SARS they were seeing then you open fire on them you think they are going to they, they are going to just uh, go and lie down and cry and repent and then begin to obey you you must be an idiot to think like that they are faced with existential threats they didn't know it before they now know he was man you and arsenal before he was big boy in nigeria before but not until not 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 after October 20 in 2020. Not after October 20. They're going to keep mind you at bay, but they're going to tell political party to close shop until we discuss the constitution by which the winner will govern. And that telling will not be in soft language. It will be, it will be because it is those people sustaining those parties willing to go to another election under it after how many rounds of elections since 1999 we had elections in 99 we had 2003 and 7 was 11 15 19 and people are still you know uh, beating uh, drums towards 2023 for something that is directly responsible for 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 this carnage in which other country in the world that do you have this number of casualties uh, which of them, even the countries at war there must be an end to the life of that constitution. Tony, let's watch this yeah. short, uh, short uh, documentary by someone that I have to give a big credit to. Let's have a look at this together. Mm. Right. Mm. Yes, there. Every day on my way to school, we pass through several schools. And some of them are very close to our house. Yet you choose to drive very far to get to my school. Why can't I go to these schools? My dear, you can't go to those schools, okay? They are not your level. Why? Because those schools are for poor people. They don't even have good teachers or even basic educational facilities. You can't be found in such schools. Come on, you're the daughter to the Commissioner of Education. You can't be found in schools like that. Mom, can I ask you something? Go ahead. Whose responsibility is it to ensure that there are good schools in this country? The government. The government? Mm -hmm. And you are the Commissioner of Education? Meaning it is your office that is supposed to provide this. But what we have is a case where some schools are good and others are bad. Going by this, the good ones are designed for the supposed rich children like me. And the bad ones or the low level ones as you call it are designed for the children of the poor. Mom, is that, is that not wrong? Should every child not have the right to get good and quality education? Why does it have to be based on how rich or how poor they are before it is gotten? My dear, these matters are beyond you, okay? You can't talk about things of this kind. Mom, I completely disagree. I disagree with you. Completely. It's about time people in public seats like you, mom, sit up to their responsibilities. Quality education is the right of every child, not minding if the child is from a poor home or rich home. 
Oh, Mom, if I as a daughter of a rich commissioner of education can be sent to a good big school, then the daughter of a poor trader can too, because it is the right of every child. In fact, driver, please stop this car. What do you mean? Driver, please stop the car. Mom, what is good for the goose is 100% good for the gander. I am not going to school again. What are you talking about? Until you do what is right. Madam Commissioner of Education, go and do your work well. Where are you going? Will you come back here? Would you come back? Driver, why did you even stop? I follow her. Follow her and bring her back here. Education is the right of every Nigerian child. It doesn't matter if the child is from a poor or rich home. Government and all those in authority should ensure that affordable and quality education is made available. Tony, you've seen that and I'm sure you're shocked yeah. to the bone. <laughs> the girl doesn't understand where, where? what the problem is. But I think maybe mm. after mm. listening to you for about a week, she should know uh. that the problem is actually the constitution. Uh, some, <laughs> no, they, they, they engage them with cartoons. They don't know what else they watch <laughs> <laughs> when there's no parent around them. No, oh, we're, we're, get, we're getting there. Oh, we're getting there. I have a. Uh, I have a, I have a, some uh, associate in uh, Abuja whose uh, whose son refused to stay. The son has been overseas, has been in school outside, and then comes back. Uh, parent thinking, uh, very happy to mix with high and mighty in Abuja. The son couldn't stand the sight of senators and ministers in their house and. He he, was, he he couldn't hide it either because he now knew that they were they were the ones uh, you know putting everybody else to death everywhere in the name of uh, politics the type they play in Nigeria and he came to the point he he came to where he he, he decided even he couldn't stand the sight of Abuja they had to relocate him to Lagos so he, 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 anything but those politicians. And these were these were the things the parents were thinking he would be happy to come back and then be drafted into an MPC or some other thing. If he refused to work for anything, do it have anything to do with government people. You know, and so many of such things are going to be happening in the days to come. Information internet uh, internet is here. Information is spreading. It's not like uh, in those days where only what the NTA tells you uh, is what you get to know. You know, uh we've gone past that now. You know. Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. The in-depth is so much. But still, I still have some few people saying, okay, we know this is what we need to do, but we've seen it with the NSARS. When they demanded for their right, the only thing the government do is to try and shut them out, shut them down, shut their mouth by putting gun directly into their head, into their arm, into their brain. And we've, we've also predicted that the ENSA is coming back as well. Yeah, the, 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 the problem hasn't gone away. Guns don't solve any problem. They, they've, rather, they've rather compounded the problem. Look at how Lai Mohammed is messing himself up and messing the whole country up in the eyes of the international community. The whole world saw what happened. You turn around to say it didn't happen. You forget that the, that the, the world is now digitized so much that except you lock yourself uh, inside a room to do anything you do outside your door, it's, it's likely to be captured, you know, uh, somehow by people who saw it. And then how much more something of the magnitude of what uh, happened at the toll gate on the 20th of um, And then we are, we are saying it. It's been debunked from every, people who have the evidence pouring in from everywhere. And you're still there lying the way you used to lie thinking that uh, who, who, who who's who, who what 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 does that represent you know the army has had to tell three stories in one uh, around one event oh we didn't go there it was hoodlum army that came oh no we didn't shoot 
Okay, we shot uh, 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 Blanc. Uh, what, what, what? The whole world is watching. You saw the, you, you listen to the debates in the British Parliament on the subject. They're just, they're just disgracing. They're now providing proof to the international community of all of what they've been hearing about Nigeria and, mm -hmm. and its ways, you know. So it's just a matter of time. Those people are going. To, I mean, nobody. They're already down. They, 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 if they don't fight for their future, they, they will be killed. Not only are they, have they been impoverished and weakened, they will be killed. Mm. The Fulani has the Fulani that will kill them are already here. You know, advancing community after community. And you think uh, people are just going to say, uh, "Let's build Nigeria. Let's not uh, allow Nigeria to," the, uh, you know. Nigeria, the Nigeria defined by 1999 is not our project. The Nigeria that was our project died in 1966. Those who who, who seized the carcass and continue to maraud all over the place in the name of uh, Nigeria, in the name of a federal government uh, in which a federation had collapsed long time ago. Hmm. Unless the rest of, unless those who are in the danger of extermination wake up now, uh, the henchmen will get to their communities, and uh, no distinction will be made, you know, when when they come. Okay, somebody said on the wire. Somebody, someone just put something on the wire just now. Uh, one second. One second. Okay, what the person is saying is this, yeah? How can the governors, the Southwest governor, unite and reject the 1999 constitution with the f amount of fatherism that is going on now? Because that would pre prevent them from doing that. And someone said the best thing is to take them out. Could that solve the problem? Take the fatherism out. No, the thing, the, the, anybody who is here talking about what governor will do doesn't is not listening to what we're saying. The power belongs to the people. How many governors? Uh, 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 all of them put together. How many? They can they, they, they can be locked in one room. If mm. if uh, if uh, no no, it's not. Uh, uh, you can't plan anything. There's nothing that can solve this problem that can be planned on a pan-Nigerian basis. Anybody who is still stupid enough to think that uh, there's a Nigeria we must save. Ah, uh, I'm sorry for that person. There's no the Nigeria that is the Nigeria the Nigeria is Nigeria has to die for you to live. The Nigeria that that provided life for you, you know, was the one that was hijacked in 1966. Mm. So if you are still thinking that uh, that these governors who suddenly have one vision to come, that vision they refuse to discuss since uh, all the while people have been asking for sovereign conference so that we can define a common vision, so we can define a vision that holds life sacrosanct, that holds all men born equal, not the one that say life uh, of the one is expendable and the other you know it, uh, not uh, infidel uh, and uh, all kinds of things like. Uh, the what fidelity what feudalism brings is uh, that all men are not born equal they are also are born to rule you between the two it's a clash of civilization mm -hmm. anybody who doesn't understand that you they owe the duty of faith to kill you as infidel they owe the duty of faith to keep you as slave because in in in, in feudalism there's only the master and the slave there's no middle ground the same people who impose sharia are the ones doing feudalism and you are, you are here discussing nigeria they wave nigerian flag and you join them and sing anthem arise your compatriots <laughs> mm. sorry for you okay i want to thank you for joining us today it's been an educative program uh, i'm sure a lot of people are going to come back and watch this program later on in the in the evening the good thing about it is that we have a lot of civilized people on the show today who has been raining thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you on you tony uh people said i love this interaction uh someone said when i said are we blind someone said yes we are blind because if we are not blind we will not be following them like a stupid mumu uh michael Oguntoimbo said thank you is from uh Wellem Wellembro in england and everybody has yeah. been clapping and putting jamming their hands for you which we seriously <laughs> want to thank them for we it has been an thank educative you. program uh i might be tempted to open the line if this caller that i have on the line now is actually trying to speak to you i'm not 100 percent sure <clears throat> caller are you trying to <clears throat> get involved with the program we have currently going on good afternoon just one second yeah sensible question and straightforward to your question your name and where you're calling from sir so much man uh, i'm one of the silent observer of this program 
Great. But I decided to vote for the first time this afternoon because um, I have a very serious question before Mr. Tony, who is our guest this afternoon. Thank you, Ramza. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tony, if you can hear me, because I've been observing you for several occasions, but I'm using this opportunity to speak with you for the first time. Thank you. My question we is, hear you. Yes. we all know the, state, the, 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 the position of things in Nigeria today. But yes. quite a long time we have been lamenting over and over and over over this 1999 constitution. So I would yes. ask you to rule it out for us today. Are you saying that the abolition of this constitution is the only solution for us? Because for me personally, I couldn't see this as a solution. Because I'm very sure, I'm about 50, very sure, but I know you are very, you are more older than I do. I just have a question. Can you just imagine yes. that a man of our ages, a woman of our ages, that can't even know his name, you can call him by his name, but he cannot answer you. Now we are saying that maybe one or two things that are going wrong in his life that could be the solution. May I explain, may I explain myself? Yes, please. Am I right? Okay. Now, 1999 is just when it's 21. Nigeria cannot identify, cannot know himself for the past 50 years. So, is this 1999, I mean, this 21 years uh, of age, this constitution of 21 years of age is going to be our solution. I just want to uh, support what we're saying that, okay, now there will be en uh, encyclos, both the Southwest and the South, uh, the South South. This, the story of this uh, Ondo state, Ondo state is just a literary boundary between the south, south south and the southwest. They've captured all of us from uh, or you're not. They've blocked the importation. They've blocked the border in the Lagos area. Now they are planning. They start out today to separate the communication, the the, the flowing between the uh, Igbo side and the Yoruba side through on the state. May I say maybe or red or something like that. That is the only way that connecting us. Okay. They broke us. They are killing us. Uh, and uh, many people are lamenting over the the, 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 the 2023. Uh, are we going to, to continue watching, reducing our population, cleaning us every day and night, taking everything to their possession until 2023? So my question is this, Mr. Tony, 1999 is it the only solution to this problem on the ground thank you sir. thank you i will let you go so that you yeah, can keep listening to the answer from your system thank you very much okay. sir thanks sir thank you i i will i will uh, i will ask the last caller to go back to the four previous editions where we identified how we came about the 90 the 1999 the, the 36 states were not created in 1999 you know there are people who people they know what they do not know this last scholar doesn't understand the meaning of constitution this last scholar doesn't know that yoruba land is available to the fulani today because the constitution conscripts yoruba land and yoruba people into nigeria and that if that constitution is taken down the union is at an end that this last scholar doesn't know that but he thinks he knows he thinks constitution is one document separate from the union uh, let's go and discuss the matters of i've seen senior advocates uh, talk such trash let's go and uh, talk about the union leave constitution alone it's like south africa and all of what was happening to the blacks in south africa you say oh leave apartheid constitution alone let's go and solve the problem of south africa it is a product of ignorance if you are being if you are being told what you do not know and you are not prepared to 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 learn what is the connect to, to see it for what it is so that you can you can speak from position of knowledge on what to do about it you are misdiagnosing the people are the people are legitimately in your space pointing guns at you you can go and buy some uh, gun in some place but the moment they cite you with that gun they will under the law execute you at sight and we're saying we need to alter that legal regime that was imposed by the forgery and fraud of that constitution if that constitution is taken down today the union is at an end you can then ask them what are you doing in my space until we get to that point until we that's the that's the that's the easiest that's the earliest that's the cheapest that's the safest point of engagement 
you can then get your guns in that in that debate if if you don't bring that debate to that point you continue to run with your two hands tied to the back with your two legs tied together that's what it is please go and just forget all of what you were told before whatever you knew before about the man go and look at the last four or five episodes of this same program if you go to the website if you go to the website of uh, the congress.org or the one of uh, freedom from nigeria.com you you are going to you are going to enlighten yourself but if you if you choose not to enlighten yourself and you want to come to argue blindly you are welcome of course but uh, you know uh, if, if we if we if we preview the this uh, kind of uh, questions we won't be wasting time on uh, people who do not want to go to know what they do not you have been told what you do not know you are not you are not listening you are, you want to come to argue Please let's go to let's uh, let's go to another another question or some do okay. you know uh, thank uh, you, uh, call, call thank it you a very day. much for that uh, we seriously appreciate that yeah what people need to realize is that this is the problem we have to find a means of solving the problem without you solving the problem you cannot get anywhere Kola are you trying to get involved with the current program okay. Uh, who, who are you? What program are you listening to? The, the constitution chain we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna put you through to Tony. One second, please. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Your name Archie. and where you're calling from, sir. Hello, caller. Hello, yeah, go ahead, sir. Your name and where you're calling from. Calling from, sir. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Your name and where you're calling from, sir. My name is Samuel. I'm coming from London, UK. Okay, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Your question to Tony. Okay. Your name and where you're from. Now, I'm if just you, trying if you to don't, ask, sorry, how sorry, sir. This mess, this sorry. Is 2000 and, uh, hello, sir. 1999 constitution. Hello, sir. Has, um, hello? There's a background noise, yeah? If you want to turn your system yeah. down a bit. Okay, okay. Uh, hello? Go ahead now, sir. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, now I'm just saying that how can we get out of this mess, this uh, 1999 constitution, uh, which has um, put everybody in bondage, especially the Southerners, and um, because the North are just adamant, they don't want to talk about restructuring, they don't want to talk about a new constitution, and we are just in a, in a very difficult position, and uh, the security architecture is just such that it is one-sided just the Fulanis are controlling all the um, security architecture now what's then the hope how do we get out of this mess that's my question because it's a very warning something and um we are in this mess and we don't want our children and children's children to be in this type of mess i am just wondering how do we get out of this mess okay I think the, we've actually the constitution of nine times yeah, the, constitution, the best thing to the Mr. constitution Tony, they are not listening <laughs> Yes. Uncle, go back to the system now and listen to the answer on your system, sir. Hello? Yes? Go and listen to the answer on your system so that we can we can free the line, yeah? Okay. Thank uh, you. Go ahead now, Mr. Tony. Free the answer to the gentleman, yeah? Now, the, 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 same, the same line of question, the Constitution is the reason the situation is the way it is. If we do what we are being asked to do by people who have been on the task, we were not just lamenting all these 20 years. We were organizing. And that was why how we came about to NACO that got the whole country discussing, including the Fulani, to say, look, this cannot be. We moved from there to going to challenge that constitution in court in 2007 to say we didn't make this. We moved from there to asking, the, to getting the, the regional blocks to come together to for, work out the formations in which they are going to be contending for their sovereignty that have been hijacked by Nigeria all the time. But from there, they came to where the regional blocs began to make out their constitutions and, 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 and go to solemn assemblies to repudiate that constitution of 99 to the hearing of the international community. Having done all of this, we are now at the, at the finishing you know, threshold of this 20-year uh, plan of how to get out of this uh, problem. Those who do not know what that this problem was there all the while because they were so cons they were they were pursuing only their own affairs and their family affairs they they are not listening to those who took our time to identify the trouble organize for solution 
that is now about to be finalized instead of coming to learn what has been done so that they can do the little that is for them to do now they are coming to argue to say i don't even know what they're talking about just out of ignorance this constitution goes down today this union is at an end today fulani will not those killing you will not you will not have legitimate presence in your space anymore if you ask if we if we compare the political parties to the close shop right now because we have repudiated that constitution that document will die within a matter of weeks from there if we don't do it full and will come to meet you wherever you are in that foolishness so it's a choice to be made do we go and tackle the political parties now to shut them ask them to close shop because the constitution by which the winner will govern is the same constitution that is uh, putting us to death if we undertake that fight today it won't take us more than a few weeks to get to the point where the constitution is in distress because nobody is going to tolerate it any further the political parties are the ones sustaining it if we don't want to go and fight them and and and, and take down that constitution then we 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 better then wait for our turn to be overrun by people who are coming at us in the name of nigeria wearing uniform of police and army pretending they're saying nigeria there's no nigeria anywhere that nigeria that is defined by this constitution is a fraud that nigeria that is discussed by this constitution is a is 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 not our project is the project of those who import that constitution and who now want to take the land of everybody and eliminate everybody if we don't address that issue and we're here talking about uh, how can we approach it from the flanks we must act we must now say to ourselves we must say loud and clear that the that the that the nigeria created and defined by this constitution is not our project we didn't we didn't we didn't submit ourselves into it we didn't set the rules that they claim we did pull back our signature by telling the political parties to close shop that's all you have been asked to do if you don't want to do that you better go get ready for when fulani gets to your doorstep Every other thing you do is lamentation that leads nowhere. There's a there's an action that can be taken in a matter of from the moment that constitution comes crashing, then the legitimacy of those who are jumping into your places will be compromised. The the union is at an end. People we they, we didn't ask anybody to say let's go and make new constitution. That's another thing they have been inserting into what we are saying. The campaign is not about making new constitution. The campaign is about taking down the constitution that creates a union of death. The day it goes down, the first order of business is not writing another constitution. The first order of business is to go to referendums. I've, I've talked about that almost three times in this one program. Take down the constitution and the union. If you don't, you are available to be killed. If you don't, you, are, you, can't, you can't keep Nigeria and keep your land. You have to make one choice. You can't keep your land and keep Nigeria. You have to make a choice. For Nigeria, for, 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 for Yoruba to leave, the Nigeria of, the, of that 19 constitution must die. Unitary Nigeria must die for Yoruba land to leave. Unitary Nigeria must die for Ijo to leave. Unitary Nigeria must die for Southern Canada to leave. Anybody who doesn't understand that is going to learn it from the battle of the Fulani Gone. Okay, I have another gentleman for you. Uh, his name yes. is Ade from the United States. Mr. Ade, go ahead, yes. sir. Your question for Tony. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. Mr. Tony, I appreciate um, what I've heard from you so far. And with my little you. sense, I'm adding things together. I think I really appreciate what, you, what you've what you been doing and even this lecture. My question is this. And it's very, very small. Um, are you guys uh, trying to get a, re um, a referendum? to be passed in the in the house of the nigerian uh, assembly whereby the people are going to have a referendum on either staying or getting out of the country or i um is is your intent uh, to be that okay um with uh, the nigerian assembly is going to jettison the constitution that they are governing by you know because that is where let's uh, not let's not like ask a, a let's not ask a wrong question uh, let's that is let's not waste I'm our time with wrong I'm questions. This program, I need to this agitation. So my my question is just in, in between those lines. Is it are we gonna are we clamoring for jettison of the the Nigerian constitution as it is right now, or are we planning to ask for a referendum? Because I know 
the only way we can get out of this uh, out of the whole thing is through a referendum. So I hope I hope my question is not redundant to everything that I've been saying. But uh, please give me the answer. It, it, Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Your question, if you are still listening, your question, your question only shows you didn't follow, you didn't listen to the program, and it would be unfair to jump in when a class that I've been holding for one hour and a half, you come uh, five minutes into arrival, you now uh, post question that the rest of the class had got answers for. The the least we can do is to listen to the whole thing, go back to even the ones before it. Before we can uh, make up our mind whether we understand what is being said or not, rather than coming with questions that have been answered uh, ten times over, you know, we the 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 nobody is going. The National Assembly, the legislative mandate of National Assembly does not extend to the issues being discussed. Not the, not government. It is a people's. The sovereignty belongs to the people. Sovereignty belongs to the people. Their sovereignty have been hijacked and confiscated by those who impose this constitution and put their signature on it. All we, are, all we are mobilizing for is to get people to take down, pull down that constitution by rejecting it and rejecting further business under it. It is after it has been taken down, it becomes clear that the union is at an end. The next business will not be to go and write another constitution immediately. The next vision business is as a consequence of what has happened, as a consequence of the collapse of that constitution and the union it erects, People will have to go first to referendum to recommit, not the referendum of National Assembly, because if the union is not there, National Assembly is the first casualty that if this constitution goes down, the National Assembly is a product of that constitution. We are not anarchists, and therefore we look in the direction of South Africa for how they manage to climb out of apartheid. We are prepared to allow those who are already elected to be in government house on a transitional capacity in the period of discussing what will replace what we are rejecting. Let that be made clear. Our quarrel is not with the the management team called government. Our quarrel is with the constitution by which the union is being operated. And so if we take the steps we have been asked, if our, if our people will listen and understand what we are telling them, they are likely to get to safety. But if they continue to argue blindly, they will, they will, they will get to where they, they, they face the fire of the first men that are marching towards them as we speak. It will be a choice they, they have to make. To listen and understand and do what they have been asked, what they have been asked to do, or to continue to argue blindly until they get shot, whether it's the police or army or Fulani henchmen or, or, or Boko Haram that shoots at you, it is because you are still hanging around arguing with the same board. Let's take down the constitution. It's not the same thing as writing new constitution. We are not waiting for national assembly to agree with us. If the constitution collapses and the union is at an end, people will go to a referendum to decide what they want to do with their future. What is complicated about that now? Is it National Assembly we're asking to come and do a referendum? Let's go to the next question, please. Uh, I think I'm going to be cutting it short there, Mr. T. Uh, yeah. Any last word for us today before we round up the program? Yes, um, the matter is straightforward. We now know the constitution is the source of the problem. All political parties in Nigeria thinking of what to do to take down that constitution. We are not talking about writing any new constitution. If that constitution goes down, writing of new constitution does not exist until the, those who were in the old union, defined by the, old, the constitution that goes down, recommit by referendum. Yoruba will go to a referendum in Yoruba land to decide that they want to return into union. The East will do the same, Middle Belt will do the same before we begin to discuss any matter of writing any new constitution. And it's not the business, none of these things have to do with National Assembly for one moment. Second, the, the, the political parties, all political parties in Nigeria subscribe to this 1999 constitution. All political parties, PDPO, APTO, APGAO, and only political parties contest election. And it is by elections that, uh, that the life of that constitution is renewed every four years. When you put these four items together, you will immediately discover that if we want an end to that constitution, we must go after the mechanism by which its life is being sustained. And the cycle since it's once in four years, 
The next cycle is 2023. We are not asking our people to wait for 2023 and boycott. No, boycott is a totally ineffective and totally useless thing to do. We are saying we must shut down the journey before it begins in 2020. Of course, there will be uh, there will be an activation. There is something we call constitutional force majeure that is coming. It will be a proclamation, you know, uh, spelling out what must now happen by this majority that is choking. If our people will listen to us, they will be able to relate with it when it comes and do their own little part. But if they are arguing with us, they won't even know when it happens and what to do inside it. It is when we when we have that formal statement before the global community as to why we insist that we can proceed on the journey of a damnation then we'll have a case those who want to protest can then have a, a charter of demand that can be pushed through because all of those who want restructuring all of those who want to do a republic all of those who want biafra all of those who want good governance all of those who want regional autonomy will be on the same in you know in the same camp of rejecting the constitution, the 9th and 10th constitution that make any of all those things impossible at this time. So our task is to do, you know, to act in concert and take down that constitution because it has our signature as the authorization for our own damnation. If we listen carefully and we grasp what we have been asked to do, it is so very simple. The constitution will collapse, the 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 the, the, the unitary union it forces on us will go down with it that means the the nigerian union of today will be at an end the un instrument that defines what our our remedy should be is called the un uh, 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 right uh, 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 declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples we are all indigenous people yoruba is indigenous people in their space he joins indigenous people in their space he was indigenous in their place the same as steve and the doma and all the others all of us have organized ourselves to say we have a right to self-determination it is our right to self-determination that has been confiscated and and and, and denigrated by this uh, constitution because it says we determine for ourselves to be in the union we are saying we did not determine those who are not listening are not are not likely to get the agreement it is when you know what the problem is that you can now approach it from the angle you can solve it so we are, we are, we, are, we have taken it step by step. It's a very complicated problem, but we took it step by step to where we have only one item now, you know, to 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 defeat the monster. Stop the political parties. Tell them to close shop. If you if we we can compare them. If they want a fight, that's a better fight to undertake than waiting for when Fulani come to your doorstep. If we can compare the political parties to close shop inside 2020, I can assure you that. Uh, the may of the, the it won't be six months from the point we do that to when we will be completely free from this monster if we refuse to do that and the politicians who are who are angling for what they get for themselves drag us towards under election when when sufficient blood flows we'll come back to this discussion <laughs> that's why we want to anchor it now Okay, thank you very much for that. I think I have uh, my last caller for you on the show. Uh, I, I, I think I just lost him, yeah? Okay, Mr. Zoni, I want to say a very big massive thank you for coming on this program today. You are taking it in the right direction. People are saying it online, regardless of what some idiots might be saying. But I've seen more <laughs> coming on the side of reasoning than some people who just think there is only their own way that has to work uh one last question <clears throat> from me this is from me do you think yes. going yes. in the direction of petition petitioning the international community do you think can that can help at all by any chance the petition that we have to there's a petition uh something that is uh, an elaborate uh case presentation to the global community by all of us who are choking here it is that constitutional force majeure that will go as a petition so that people can say i completely agree with this proposition put your names and particulars that's the petition that uh, will go to the international community the discussions of what we are this thing we're talking about have been discussed at the un headquarters you know for now 
including when the instrument came in 2007. It was a part of this. We had already finished product at the time. We were directly involved in how that instrument emerged at the UN. And so, let us listen, let us disseminate, let us take advantage of, the, of this digital age we are in now to get at the information that explains these things and disseminate this information to those who do not know. There are a whole number of people who do not know. They just, they just do not know. It's not their fault because, you know, they had no reason to try to know before. But now, everybody is looking for information. Our task is to get hold of this information that is now abund abundantly available, disseminate it everywhere. And people will just see what they need to do to get out of this trouble. If we shut down, if we get the political, if we compare the political parties, if we have to fight the political parties, we will fight them. Any type of fight they want, we are able to give them that fight on the street corners. Don't go to, don't wait for when you go to their big headquarters. Every corner where they are in your neighborhood, they are the ones, you know, putting together the firewood by which you will be roasted. If we stop them, if we get them to close shop now, suspend everything, close shop for now until we have a constitution by which a winner of election can govern. If we do that, it will be less than six months from that point we're able to do that. Once it becomes clear that no further elections will happen in Nigeria, I can we can begin to put dates for when other things will happen. Until we do that, we're just entirely leaving the union intact for the Fulani to conquer. And uh, yeah. anybody who dies in the process will be dying from the ignorance of not knowing what uh, has to be done. I want to say a very big thank you again for coming on the show today. Until next week, thank ladies you. and gentlemen, when we come your way again, in this educative and very interactive program that you can pick up the best of everything you need to know either for this constitution or for the for the one beyond this because a lot of people are getting to understand how constitution and all the other things work now so making an informed decision on so many issues in your current life and in your future life will be a good decision mr tony thank you until next week when we come you again Goodbye. Thank you very much.